Hello, today I'm going to tell you about the book The Spirit of Numbers by British astrologer David Hamblin. This is a great book. Uh, David Hamblin came out with a book called Harmonic Charts back in 1983. That book has become a classic book on harmonic astrology. I see it everywhere. Very, very popular. People love it. And now much later in the year 2011, he's come out with another book called The Spirit of Numbers. This is a big, big step forward in understanding harmonic astrology after his decades of work in harmonic astrology. And also, in this book, this wonderful book, The Spirit of Numbers, David Hamblin presents to you this table. He has a table of the harmonic aspects up to harmonic 32. This table helps organize and consolidate all this information into a nice, easy-to-use format so you can see which harmonics are the most important and what's going on with them. And to set that up by hand is, is very tedious. Uh, he asked us if we would program that into our Kepler and Sirius programs, and we did that. So this table that, that he uses in the book is in the Kepler 8 and the Sirius 2 software. It's what David Hamblin uses. And of course, he's not going to do this by hand now that he's got the software to do it. So I'll tell you about the book and how you use this table of, of information to get insight into people's charts. We're going to look at the chart of a famous person, the politician Tony Blair, former Prime Minister of England, to demonstrate the ideas. Okay, but first, real quickly, to make sure we're all on the same page and you understand the terminology, let me just review a few basic concepts about harmonic astrology. If you're already familiar with this, this will just take a minute, but just to make sure you know, we're all together on this. The basic idea of harmonic astrology is, i got four concepts here. Number one, an aspect is a fraction of a circle. So a trine, we can look at as being a one-third aspect. We can look at a square as a one-fourth aspect. So the idea in harmonic astrology is the reason that there is an aspect called a trine is because it's a fraction of a circle. And point number two Fractions that are not normally used, like one ninth, two ninths, or even one twenty third of a circle or two twenty thirds of a circle, are also important, and they are not minor in importance, even though we often call them minor aspects. The idea in harmonic astrology is that these aspects are important. Number three, given this idea that an aspect is a fraction of a circle, and a fraction has two numbers, right? The top part, the numerator for one ninth would be one, the denominator, bottom part is nine. So our third point is that the denominator of the aspect is called the harmonic. So when people say the two planets are in ninth harmonic, it means they're one ninth, two ninths, or some other ninths of a circle. So the denominator is, in a sense, more important than the numerator. All aspects with the same denominator have a similar meaning. Uh, and point number four, last point, is that the meaning of a harmonic like 27 is a combination of 9 and 3, because 9 times 3 equals 27. Or you could say it's really 3, because 9 equals 3 times 3. So the meaning of 27 is built on the number 3. Maybe a simpler example is 21. What is the meaning of the 21st harmonic? It's a combination of 7 and 3. So the key to interpretation is to determine the meanings of the prime numbers. What does 7 mean? What does 3 mean? And this is where the title of the book comes from, The Spirit of Numbers. The spirit or essence or quality of these prime numbers is the foundation of harmonic astrology. And in this book, The Spirit of Numbers, uh, the author, David Hamblin, explains the meanings of the prime numbers up to 32. Um, okay, now I've already uh, said this, um, but it's worth restating. So when we say that two planets are in the 29th harmonic, what are we saying? It sounds esoteric or, you know, very abstract or like harmonics. It sounds very mathematical. It may scare you away. All it means is that the planets are 129th, 229th, 329th, 
or some other 20 ninths of a circle apart. We don't care how many degrees that is because it would be tedious to figure it out, but if two planets are 1 29th or 2 29ths or 3 29ths or 4 29ths of a circle apart, they're in this 29 vibration. And in this book, uh, David Hamblin explains to us what 29 means. Now, how does he come up with these meanings? It's evidence-based. And this is one of the things I love about this book is that what he did is he based this on uh, more than a thousand charts, mostly birth charts of famous people, but also some mundane charts. The book contains 156 case studies illustrating the qualities of each of the prime numbers. So he goes through over a thousand charts, finds the charts with very strong uh, aspects in, in these various harmonics, and he gives 156 case studies, also 10 more detailed case studies. Um, at, you know, at the end of the book, where he goes into more detail. Um, also, some of you know that I've done work in harmonics, lots of work in harmonics. That's the main thing I do in a system I call vibrational astrology. And I've also uh, researched the first 32 harmonics. And my meanings of the, of the harmonics are very similar to David Hamblin's. Not surprising, because when you do these harmonic charts, it starts to stand out. There are some differences, and that's that's exciting as we research this and figure it out and people work on this independently. Uh, we've started discussing our findings and um, I'm learning a lot from him. I'm very excited about his work. Okay, so let's see an example of how David Hamblin analyzes a chart using these, you might call them minor aspects, these harmonic aspects, these aspects we don't normally use. We'll use Tony Blair as an example. Um, now, what do we know about Tony Blair? Well, we know a lot of things about him. One interesting thing about him is that, he, you know, on the, I guess you could say on the negative side, he, you know, there's positive negatives to, to any uh, politician. But it came, I, I, you know, when this happened, it came as a bit of a surprise to me um, that he wholeheartedly and fully supported the American military offensive in Iraq. Um, and this proved to be an error in judgment. We've recently had an election here in the United States, Hillary Clinton versus um, Donald Trump, and both candidates tried to distance themselves from their support of Iraq. Um, Hillary Clinton admitted that she voted for it and said it was a mistake. So whether you're on the right or left or liberal or conservative or whatever you might call it in your country, I think just about everybody agrees huge mistakes were made in these these invasions into Iraq. Um, we, The United States believed there were weapons of mass destruction. There were not weapons of mass destruction. The war was long. There was much suffering on both sides. Um, and Iraq, in many ways, is worse off after the war than it was before the war. Uh, and this war fostered the grow growth of terrorist groups. So there was this kind of naive I idea, we'll get rid of Saddam Hussein, the Iraqis will feel liberated, they'll all be dancing in the streets, and everything will work out fine. Um, some people later on said, oh, we never said it would be that easy. Uh, well, anyway, they didn't think it was going to be this difficult and have this much pain and agony uh, and negative results. So it ended up being, uh, for the most part, a big mistake. Maybe it could have done been, been done properly and in a correct way. People will debate these things forever. But I think everybody agrees huge mistakes were made that were very costly in terms of human suffering, uh, cost, financial burdens, etc. Okay, so let's look at these uh, harmonic aspects in the way that David Hamblin does it and see if it sheds some light on Tony Blair and we will see that it does. So here's what we do. We go into the Kepler or Sirius program. I happen to be in the Sirius 2 program but in Kepler 8 it will work exactly the same way. I have Tony Blair's chart up here. So here's Tony Blair. I went into the data entry screen and read it in. And then I go to listings, and then 
harmonic patterns listings, this uh, menu item right here, and then I select number 7. This is it. Table of Harmonics 1 to 32. Maybe I'll rename this to David Hamblin's Table of Harmonics 1 to 32. Might make it clearer that this is the one you want to, to, to analyze um, the chart and the way that he does. So we click OK, and it takes a second or two to calculate, and there it is. And what this is going to show us, it's got the birth information at the top, planet positions, and then it's it has these columns, 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31. Those are the harmonics, and then below it is each pair of planets, and it tells us what aspects are being made. So, for example, Sun and Moon are in 23rd harmonic. That means that when Tony Blair was born, Sun and Moon were 1 23rd or 2 23rds or 3 23rds, some 23rds uh, of a fraction apart, and it's red, and it tells me here that red means within a 2 degree orb, means it's very strong. So the color coding is very helpful. You can go down, you find the red, those are very strong aspects. And that is the orb in the harmonic chart, not the natal chart. We don't have to get into the technicalities of what an orb in a harmonic chart means, um, but what it means is that these orbs, you might say, are scaled. They are the same. They're proportionally the same regardless of the harmonic. What's really important here, if you don't understand those technical details about harmonic charts, it's not that difficult, but if you haven't been exposed to it, is that the red are very strong. The green are within six degrees. They're there. They're solid and the black ones go out to 12 degrees. So you have black, green is stronger, and red is the strongest. And you can scroll down, and with this color coding and these columns, you can see which harmonics have a lot of aspects. Look at 5. Underneath the column 5, we see a 20 in red, 15, 10, 10, 10, and it tells us here, if I scroll up, that harmonic 5 actually means 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, because the meaning of 10th harmonic is 5 times 2. Uh, and 2 means striving, and 5 means creativity. So the main emphasis here is that it's 5. It's, these are creative aspects. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. The 10 is a little more striving, a little more action-oriented than five, but they're all creative. So we can go down and we see that there's a lot of creativity here in Tony Blair. What other numbers show up? Look at 23. And notice, by the way, that um, you know in, in these lists of harmonics, that 17, 19, 23, 29, and 31 do not have extra harmonics. So by chance, you're not going to have as many numbers in these, these other harmonics as it's just that one, just that single harmonic. And in 23, we see Sun and Moon are in 23. Uh, Sun, Neptune are 23, and Moon, Neptune are 23. There's a Sun, Moon, Neptune. It's all red all very exact, plus there are other 23s. So a lot of 23 and a lot of 5. Those are two harmonics that will be important, especially important for uh, Tony Blair, the Sun Mars 20th harmonic. So let's talk about what that means, and let's talk about what the Sun Moon Neptune means in 23rd harmonic. So the, the point is that this table allows you to see which aspects really stand out? You can see the red, and there are only a handful of them. These are the really strong aspects. Um, and then also the green are important, and then if you see a lot of aspects, that means that that, that basic vibration is strong. His five vibration is strong. Seven, not as many. Eleven, not as many. So it's interesting. Um, okay, let's go back to our PowerPoint. And let's see what this means. So we see many aspects in the five column, and we saw the sun, Mars, and red. What does it mean? This is a quote 
from my correspondence with David. We corresponded um, by email uh, about making this video and what we would present in it. And here's what he emailed me. He said, 20 is 5 times 2 times 2. So this aspect is a combination of 2-ness and 5-ness, right? And just as we discussed, 2-ness is about striving and 5-ness is about creativity, creating order out of chaos. So this aspect shows that Blair is striving to find creative ways of expressing himself, son, through decisive action, Mars. Um, now, let me add my own observation to this. I agree. Sun, Mars, people are active in creative pursuits. Uh, and, and I also find that Mars in these fifth harmonic aspects often inclines to enjoying dynamic or even aggressive sports. Uh, and one of the problems that happens with Tony Blair with his invasion into Iraq is I think with a Sun Mars in 20th harmonic, any five based harmonic, there's a tendency to overlook the horrors of war. People with these aspects enjoy competitive sports. They enjoy dynamic sports. They're so much fun that sometimes they can overlook the horror or pain that can be involved in these sports. Um, here's an interesting thing. Uranus and Pluto, a slight aside here, but to emphasize this fifth harmonic and what happens with explosive combinations in fifth harmonic, here's something a lot of people don't know, is that Uranus and Pluto formed fifth harmonic aspects, this means quintile or biquintile, twice in the 20th century, right at the time of the wars, World War I and World War II. And there, consequently, when Uranus and Pluto, these disruptive planets are fifth harmonic, you get into what you might call war games. And I think in World War II, people were aware of the horrors of war. You get songs like the White Cliffs of Dover that show that people did not delight in war, but unfortunately, a culture of enjoying war games developed from World War II, and usually what we hear about World War II is the heroism, the victory of good over evil. We don't hear as much about the pain and horror of World War II, which all wars bring. And here are the aspects. Uranus and Pluto were in a biquintile aspect in 1913 in 19, and into 1914, well, starting in 1912, 13, 14, right during World War One, the beginning of World War One, um, and right, and at the beginning of World War Two, we have Uranus and Pluto in quintile, one fifth aspect. This lower case here means in 1938 and 41, it didn't, uh, wasn't exact, got within a degree or, but wasn't exact. So very interesting. You get these explosive combinations um, when people enjoy these. Um, aggressive activities and overlook the misery that they can cause. And I think that this is getting back to Tony Blair, the Sun Mars 20th harmonic, exactly what David Hamblin said, creative solutions, creative um, activity. Um, and I just want to add that note. I think they can overlook the damage being done. It draws them into war more easily. Now let's look at his 23rd harmonic. How is it that Tony Blair, very smart fellow, very good politician, gets so enthusiastic about a horrific war that ends up being disastrous? How did he make this blunder? Well, the Sun, Mars, and 20th harmonic is one reason, and another reason is this huge 23rd harmonic pattern. It, it stands out. In some ways, it's the most conspicuous harmonic for him with sun and moon, whenever you get sun and moon, the two lights, as we call them in astrology, uh, whatever they do is extremely important, and it's red within a two-degree orb in the harmonic chart, extremely strong sun moon with Neptune. So in what way is Tony Blair Neptunian? This is saying that in some way he's very Neptunian, he's a dreamer, um, what what's going on and his enthusiastic and unswerving support for the Iraq invasion in retrospect now seems to be very naive and foolishly idealistic 
if we had looked at his chart ahead of time and we knew about these harmonic patterns, we would have had some concern that Tony Blair, no matter how intelligent and grounded and smart and experienced he seemed as a politician, there's a bit of a dreamer in him. And this, you know, this ease with which he could become naive. Now here is what David Hamblin sent me in the email, and this is discussed exactly this way in his book. If you get his book, you can learn all about this. Um, people with very strong 23-ness aspects tend to be dreamers and fantasists. They have a vision of how they would like the world to be, and they often see the world in terms of sharp contrasts between white and black, right and wrong, good and evil. We can see how these aspects will have helped Blair to believe that Saddam Hussein was the embodiment of evil and that all problems would be solved by his removal. So this simple visionary idea, idealistic idea that there's the bad guy, we'll get rid of him and everything will work out right. Sun, Moon and Neptune in 23rd harmonic, very strong inclination to this and that's what happened. Um, now. Uh, Hamblin's insight into the 23rd harmonic really makes sense to me. In my own work, I've emphasized that the 23rd har harmonic takes risks. But I've noticed when they're taking these risks, what's happening when people take these risks? They have this faith in their dream, their vision, and they're not looking at the data. They're not looking at the, the hard facts. You might say the statistics. So the heart of this risk taking is often that we trust our instincts and even more than our instincts, it's this hope, this fantasy. You know, it's why we play the lottery. We we have this dream that, that you know, somewhere over the rainbow is going to happen for me. That feeling is very much 23rd harmonic. And I, I'm learning a lot by studying Hamblin's work because it's he's bringing out some things that I've sensed about the harmonics, but I hadn't completely articulated. Yeah, there is this kind of dreamy, far-off feeling about the 23rd harmonic, uh, and I would add it leads to this risk-taking. It's exactly what he did in the Iraq War. Oh, by the way, um, George W. Bush, who was leading the charge into Iraq, has some square Neptune in the 23rd harmonic. Um, so if you know about harmonic charts, you, you know that uh, conjunctions, oppositions, and squares in the harmonic chart give that tone. And Tony Blair has Sun, Moon, Neptune in the 23rd harmonic. And um, George W. Bush has them squared in the 23rd harmonic. So you can also look at the harmonic charts for more information. But the bottom line is, getting back to Tony Blair, he has the Sun, Moon, Neptune in 23rd harmonic. And this is a force, an astrological motivation in his life that led him into this huge mistake. Um, so, concluding comments. Hamblin's book, The Spirit of Numbers, it's it's a great book. Important contribution to, to uh, astrology. His decades of work in harmonic astrology. His strong evidence-based approach. Not just, oh, you know, groovy, we have these numbers and all this numerology. He actually researches this, spends huge amounts of time sorting through this, and comes up with some great insights. And by him requesting that we add this table to Kepler and Sirius, and, and, and we did that, we're now all able to, to have this information at our fingertips. So, you know, working together with the software and the creative thinkers and, and we're authors of books, we we're able to put all this together and, and make this available to you. Okay, my friends, I hope you find that interesting. Let me just finish here with two things. Let me um, show you the, if you go to Amazon.com, I search for David Hamblin, The Spirit of Numbers, you'll see the book. Amazon's always a handy place to, to order the book, uh, and it tells you about it here. And lastly, let me go back to my PowerPoint, just my concluding uh, page here on our additional resources, the website, astrosoftware.com, uh, which makes the Kepler and Sirius programs. Um, here's my YouTube page. If you go to YouTube and just type my name, or here's the exact address. Um, we have a, you know, what are we up to? 250 uh, videos now. 
Um, here's our school. The Avalon School of Astrology. We have online classes, online reports to start guidance. Our other software company, Matrix Software at astrologysoftware.com and also some other free services at astrologyland.com. Thank you very much for listening, my friends. God bless. Namaste.